We're in the praise. The praise awakened inside of every heart. For he is awesome. I got his awesome. The crowd is shaking, and we're singing loud. For he is awesome. I got his awesome. He is faithful. You are faithful, and you're able to do anything. So I trust you, never doubt you, because you hold it on. Every day of my life, I'll praise you. Every moment, I'll bless your name. You have given me love unfailing. The praise awaken inside of every heart. For he is awesome. I got the ground. The ground is shaking as we're singing loud. For he is awesome. I got his awesome. You are faithful. You are faithful and you're able to do anything. So I trust you, never doubt you, because you hold it all. Every day of my life I'll praise you. Every moment I'll bless your name. You have given me love and with me this morning. See, we praise awake. It doesn't matter what you look like. It matters what you make God look like. And when you think you're making your God look silly, your God goes, that right there, that's praise. That's worship. So we're going to sing this together. We're going to let praise awaken in this building. Let praise awaken in this generation. The praise awaken all around the world. The praise awaken in this generation. The praise awaken. The praise awaken in this generation. The praise awaken. The praise awaken in this generation. The praise awaken. Every day of my life, I praise you. Bless your name. You have given me love and faith. Hey, 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 every day. Every day of my life, I praise you. Every moment, I bless your name. Give him praise this morning. Whoa. I sing, I want to scream. I want to scream it out. From every mountain top, your goodness knows no bounds. Your goodness never stops. Your mercy follows me. Your kindness fills my life. Your love amazes me. And I'll sing. And I'll sing because you are good. And I'll dance because. You are good and I'll shout because 
you are good, you are good to me. And I'll sing, and I'll sing, because you are good, and I'll dance, because you are good, and I'll shout, because you are good, you are good to me. From the top. Nothing and no one comes anywhere close to you. The earth and oceans deep only reflect this truth. And in my darkest night, you shine as bright as day. Your love amazes me. I'll sing. And I'll sing because you are good and I'll dance because you are good and I'll shout because you are good, you are good and I'll sing and I'll sing because you are good and I'll dance because you are good and I'll shout you are good, you are good with a cry, with the cry of praise my heart will proclaim you are good, you are good, in the sun of rain, my life celebrates, you are good, you are good, with a cry, with a cry of praise, my heart will proclaim, you are good. In the sun of rain, my life celebrates. You are good, you are good. Sing with a cry, with a cry of praise. My heart will proclaim. You are good, you are good. And in the sun of rain, Celebrate. You are good. You are good. You are good. I'll sing. And I'll sing because you are good. And I'll dance because you are good. And I'll shout because you are good. You are good. And I'll sing. And I'll sing because you are good. And I'll dance because you are good. And I'll shout. You are good, you are good to me. And I'll sing because you are good and I'll dance because you are good and I'll shout because you are good, you are good to me. And I'll sing because you are good and I'll dance because you are good and I'll shout because you are good, you are good to me.
full of faith declare and our song it will be out of the darkness we will rise and say he is faithful he is glorious and he is Jesus oh my hope is in him he is
Come on, just begin to lift up your voices. You're gonna song. Who's gonna song in them this morning? <laughs> Come on, who's gonna song? Oh, we glorify you. Now we magnify your name, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. Praise. Oh, you're glorious, Lord, you are glorious. Holy. You are healer and deliverer, Lord, Savior of our souls. You are healer and deliverer, Savior of our souls. You are healer, wholeness is in you. You're the healer and deliverer of our souls. Oh, Jesus, you're worthy of all our praise. Oh, you are healer. Wholeness is in you. Healing is in you. If you're not well this morning, if you need a, a healing touch, there is just a great sense of the presence of God for healing. I, um, I want to pray for some people just in the worship. So if you need someone to lay hands on you, I want you to come down and just uh, take a few moments. We're going to pray for you right now. Nairi, I want you to come. We want to pray for you. Um, if anybody is in you know, just need of just someone to lay hands on them and encourage them in the presence of God, I want you to come right now. There's people here that are struggling with the whole area of rheumatism and arthritis, and God wants to just really begin to deal with that in this worship. He is our healer. Amen. He is our wholeness. Some of you feel like there's been a fire blanket put on your life. And God's here. He's the deliverer. He begins to just take that off you and uh, set you free. And uh, there's no better place than in worship than to do that. Oh, here's your healing. Oh, where's, where's my prayer team? Come on, let's just start praying for these guys right now. And uh, here we go. We'll start laying hands on them. Healing. He has paid, He has paid the highest price, He has proven His great love for us, we will praise Him with our lives, and proclaim our love for Him, He has paid. He has paid the highest price He has proven His great love for us We will praise Him with our lives And proclaim our love for Him thing begins to take place when you realize that he's already paid for it. 
He's already paid for your life. He's already paid for your salvation. He's already paid for your healing. All that's left is to step into that. He's paid for it. He's proven it. And the response to that is we will praise Him with our lives. We'll proclaim our love for Him. Proclaim our love for you, God. Be enthroned on the praise of your church. Nothing but the blood, nothing but the blood, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood, nothing but the blood, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing, nothing, nothing. The blood, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood, nothing but the blood, nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing, nothing, nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Jesus, nothing but the blood of Jesus. There's nothing, there's nothing, there's nothing but the blood. There's nothing but the blood of Jesus. We stand in the amazing knowledge that by his stripes we're healed amen <laughs> i want you to put your hand on your on your own chest right now on your own body the lord will bless you and the lord will keep you and the lord will make his face and his countenance to shine upon you and give you his peace his shalom his healing his wholeness his completeness and all god's people said <laughs> Amen. Yeah, come on. I want you to grab at least a couple of people and, and just bless them this morning because they are very blessable. All right, just uh, make a beeline for them. Say hi to them. 
That'd be a very cool thing to do. Oh, you glorious Lord. Oh, you glorious Lord. <clears throat> Hallelujah. How you doing? It's all good? Fantastic. We are going to have a great day today. We've got um, a combined service tonight for churches that have been involved with the 24-7 prayer. And uh, so we've got the Southland Gospel Choir here tonight as well. And uh, we're going to have a great time. So come. Uh, bring some friends and uh, let's pack the place and uh, we're going to have a great time. And it's, as our guest today, this morning and tonight, we have Pastor Peter Prothero all the way from Jubilee Church in London, England. It's great to have you here, Peter. It's, uh, it's great. Peter was here some years ago and, uh, and uh, I spoke to him uh, probably about over a year ago. I knew he was coming, so uh, I wanted to get him to come back again and that would be really cool. So uh, fantastic. Give Peter a chocolate. That's a good idea. Yeah. He's, he's good. He's an Englishman and he's good. You know, he's going to pass it on to someone. That's awesome. That's fantastic. Who's had a birthday in the last week? Anybody? Any birthdays around? We're going to, Tony, come on. Just, um, the, the, Garth, can you just take those chocolates and chuck them around for me? Because my aim's getting... But Tony, there's Tony right there. Uh, very, very cool. It's fantastic stuff. Anybody else? Any birthdays? Excuse my voice this morning. I was... Uh, <clears throat> There we go. Fantastic stuff. Well done. Happy birthday. Great to have some birthday celebrations in the house. Um, you got what? Alana's just had her second birthday. Did you get a chocolate? Yeah, amen. Give her that. Don't touch it. <laughs> this one right up here. You've got to wave at me like an auction because otherwise I can't see. It's, a, it's awesome. Just jump up and do a little dance. Forty-two, come on, it's fantastic. Very cool, very cool, very good indeed. We've um, anybody else? No one else? Alrighty, no one. Okay, here, right at the back, Ginny. Who's had a granddaughter? When? Hey, give him a carrot. <laughs> 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 Dip it in something Fantastic Hey listen um, we've, got, uh, we've got our boutique conference Coming up in Queenstown Because the, um, the middle of May is, uh, is Pentecost Which we always celebrate And so uh, Pastor Shane Willard is coming And, um, and so we run a leaders conference uh, In Queenstown and, um, and so we've booked a hotel uh, hotel conference room up there. There is limited seating, but you know there are more seats available, so you've got to come. There's people coming from Australia to it, um, and uh, they're, they're, we're just going to have a great time. So Pastor Shane is going to be with us. Pastor Mike Connell is going to be with us. Um, and uh, if you've never met Mike before, you're in for a real treat. Um, so he'll be in Queenstown only. Shane's coming to Invercargill. Pastor Clark Taylor is going to be there. He doesn't want to speak, but I'm going to make him. And um, if I can make Clark Taylor do anything, but anyway, um, so uh, he's going to be there. We're going to have some fun. And uh, so if you want to come to that uh, and, uh, you know, are involved in leadership or you're involved in leading a cell group or you can lead yourself to work most mornings, you should come. And uh, because I, being in that environment is going to be fantastic. And uh, I don't know about you, but I just grow an extra arm and a leg when I'm with a whole bunch of leaders like that. And uh, these guys... Um, particularly Shane and Mike and uh, Pastor Clark, you know, just travel the world and really carry something on their lives uh, that uh, will challenge you. Mike's an amazing guy, travels all throughout Asia uh, and predominantly in Asia in the States, but uh, he, he has a great heart for Asian people. And uh, he has just that, um, he's on the boards of some really large churches in Asia and uh, mentors many pastors who are now really famous. And, uh, and he's, he's, a, he's a very talented guy in his own right. He holds a master's in physics 
um, and, and yet um, his major gifting is moving in the Holy Spirit uh, and, anoint, and, and particularly in deliverance, which is hilarious because he does it in such a hilarious way. So um, if you've got demons, you should come. So if you're sitting next to someone of the demons, just put your hand up. See, I always get better of a response that way. So anyway, that's always good. So it's fantastic. Hey, listen, we've got Len Jones coming as well. Um, we've got a clip we want to play, so we're just going to dim the lights. And, and, uh, and this clip is, uh, Le- Len was in Auckland last night, and this morning uh, he's there, and he'll be with us uh, Monday night next week. And uh, it's going to be great. Hi, I'm Leonard Jones. I'm a worship leader from North Carolina, Charlotte. I go to a church called Morning Star Ministries. Rick Joyner is my pastor. Uh, God is very interested in all of us, and He really wants us to to feel His presence. And the way you do that is spend time with Him. Who hold up your name to declare you their God. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, hallelujah. I'm here today with Leonard Jones, and he is uh, really a legend in the area of worship. Where do you place your music on the spectrum? Um, I don't know. I, I, I just, I try to be creative. I will delve into different styles. I'll delve into Indian music or Arabic music. You know, or, or jazz or you know, in, uh, classical. I, I've written symphonies, so I will go in pull from symphonic. Can I just say this? You don't look like a guy who's writing symphonies. (laughs) I have. (laughs) I've I've seen what's called the manifest presence of the Lord in a cloud. When we were worshiping, we were worshiping the Lord one time. For 10 hours, we were worshiping Him. And uh, all of a sudden, a cloud just appears right in the middle of the stage. And everybody's like looking at each other, just worshiping God with all their might. Your church would have its own sound. My church would have its own sound. I'm not trying to teach them my style, I'm trying to teach them to be creative. We're going to have fun. He Apparently he plays the spoons as well. So, uh, but he, he is a, uh, Peter, you've, you've heard him. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, he's, he's going to be great. Our musos are practicing because they're going to back him. And uh, that's exciting. They're slightly nervous. You need to, if you're praying, you need to pray for our musos, all right? But uh, on the Monday night, there's a bit of, Len's going to arrive and we're going to have a bit of a practice with the musos. But you can come. Just don't tell anybody. Uh, you just come. And, uh, but on Tuesday night, what we're going to do is have a public worship evening with Leonard. And uh, that's going to be fantastic. So, uh, but you can come to the practice as well. So that'll be good, huh? All good? All right. Really good. You're not very excitable this morning. It's all right. It's Monday morning. It was a long night or something. It's all good. Turn to someone next to them and you know, like, give them some mouth-to-mouth resuscitation or something. Rather, It's just like, that would be really good. Just do that. Not my mother. And um, so there we go. Hey, listen, there's a great, there's a great scripture. I, I was... I, I was you know, just, I just said to the Lord this morning, what's a great way to take up the offering? And, uh, 
and he, he goes to X. I'm an X. Yeah, they're always doing stuff. So X, it says this in X. It's, and I don't know, this is not an offering message. But um, I'm going, Lord, this is not an offering message. It goes, the apostles were performing many miraculous signs and wonders amongst the people. And all the believers were meeting regularly at the temple in the area known as Solomon's, Solomon's Colonnade. But no one else dared to join them. Even though all the people had high regard for them. And yet more and more people believed and and were brought to the Lord, crowds of both men and women. And the result of the apostles' work, sick people were brought out into the streets on beds and mats so that the shadow of Peter might fall across some of them as they went by. And the crowds came from villages around Jerusalem, bringing their sick, and, and, the, and, the, and those possessed by evil spirits, and all were healed. And you know, I, I, the, the thought of, of Peter's shadow just falling on people, can you imagine that? There was such a revival going on that they knew they had worked out where Peter went from his house to the church to the synagogue on his daily ride. And they worked out that if they brought their sick along that particular path, that the shadow of Peter passing on would heal them and restore them. Can you imagine being in that? <laughs> that you met? You've got to step into it sometimes. And I'm looking at that going, was it just Peter? Because you see, we start looking at, at men. You remember Peter and John going to the temple. He goes, look, don't, we don't have anything. The guy, the guy looked at them. He said, look at us. And then explained he didn't have anything. He said, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. So it isn't his shadow so much as what overshadows him. It's not, it's not what you and I carry. It's what overshadows us. It's what's, what, what gets over us. And if we live under the canopy of God's amazing provision and grace, that we can begin to cast a shadow way longer than what we know and begin to touch people's lives, begin to help the poor, begin to sow into revival, begin to sow. Can you imagine? And all were healed. And so this morning as we take up our offering, I want to pray, I want to pray that sow into your shadow. Sow into your shadow. So into what overshadows you. you know, that young Simon here is just like taking the year out and what he's doing is he's spending it with the Lord. You go, oh, and he's, he's not. He's probably just wasting time and sleeping in. No, he's not. He's probably doing a little bit of that. But he's just like, he's, he's an artist. He's a musician. But he is a lover of Jesus. And, and you know, he's, this is his own story to tell, but I looked at him this morning and I watch him because I know that he is spending time in the overshadowing presence of God so that when he plays his instrument, the shadow might get on all of us. And so, Father, this morning we sow into this. We just say thank you. That, Lord, that there is nothing impossible for you. That, Lord, that we want to see that revival. We want to see that, that even when we walk into a room, that you begin to overshadow us in such a way that an atmosphere begins to change and begins to touch people's lives in such a remarkable way that their lives turn forever. In Jesus' name. Who can say amen to that? Come on, let's just stand together, shall we, as we give. And uh, we're going to sing a song, and then I'm going to get Pastor Peter up and share with us. And uh, come on, let's just, let's just lift our hearts one more time. Let's worship together, shall we?
your presence, Lord. So welcome here. We worship you. your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we love your presence. Lord, we lift our voice this morning and we just say thank you that where two or three gather in your name, there you are in the midst. We thank you for your astonishing presence. goodness, Lord. Thank you for your goodness. Father, we want to thank you for your word. We want to thank you that you're enthroned in the praises of your people. Come on, just lift your hands for a moment. Lord, we enthrone you. Actually, you're already enthroned. We lift our hands and we honour the enthronement. Lord, we don't lift you up. You are lifted up. You are high and lifted up. You don't need our lifting up. But Father, as we lift our hands this morning, Lord, we say thank you that we can worship you. We bless you. We thank you that you've put us in such an amazing situation, that your grace is amazing. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Pray for those people on your left and right. Father, we thank you for them. Bless them. Let them open their hearts this morning to hear what you have to say for them as well. In Jesus' name. Amen.
Awesome. Just take your seats for a moment. Uh, actually, before you do, I want you to just to remain standing because I, I want, as uh, Pastor Peter comes, I want you to give him a great self and welcome. Uh, Peter has been here before about four years ago, maybe four or five years ago, and um, I just loved having him here. And we've been in touch. We've caught up, obviously, when he's been back in New Zealand. He's had a really busy week. Uh, he spoke five times in Auckland last week. Then they flew him to Melbourne. We spoke around in Victoria uh, and in a Planet Shakers Bible College and all those kind of things. So uh, he's here, he's ready. He's either run out or he's ready to go. So uh, I want you to put your hands together. Welcome, Pastor Peter Prothero, all the way from London. Thanks, friends. Turn to the person next to you, say, I'm glad you're here today. Hey, so it's good to be back and I love the new stage, space, the final frontier, it's great, you can move around now, I love it, so I'm so thrilled at what you guys have done over these last few years, it's just wonderful, it's wonderful to see vision fulfilled, isn't it, that's exciting, and, uh, and God wants to fill the house. He wants to fill it with his presence and then he wants to fill it with his people. Because when God's people and God's presence get together, boy, stuff really starts to happen. So I'm really excited for you. I'm excited for your future. And let me just once again uh, really highly commend Leonard Jones to you. I used to be a teacher in Denmark. I was at the International Apostolic Bible College in Kolding in Denmark for eight years. Uh, I served there as a, as a full-time I was a senior lecturer there, actually, and, and I was responsible for all the pastoral and leadership training that went on. And uh, we had students from 20 different nations. And so I've trained literally hundreds of pastors who are out there in the world serving now in different areas of ministry. And we had the privilege of having Leonard Jones for a week. So he came and led worship every single day in our Bible college. And we had a, a theme week, and the whole theme of the week was worship. And I want to tell you, in all my years of ministry, 35 years of ministry, and I've traveled all over the world, I have never seen a more talented and diverse musician. Uh, his talent is exceptional, but his heart for God is even bigger than his talent. And I even had the privilege of ministering at Morningstar actually a few years ago in, in Charlotte, North Carolina. Did their Friday night service that was packed out and he led worship. I'll tell you, it's just a privilege. And he's coming to Invercargill. I, I tell you, I, I can't imagine what would be more important. I mean, I don't know what in your world could be more important, but I'm telling you, he is coming to you. That is phenomenal. Take advantage of it. You know, record what's ever on TV. Come on. Just don't miss that opportunity. It's, it's going to be awesome. And you'll love him. He's such a generous, spirited guy. And particularly with you musicians. He won't make you feel like you don't know anything. Or even though you will feel that. <laughs> but he won't make you feel that way. He will encourage you in your talent and in your gift. And, and, in, and in serving the Lord with that talent. So an amazing guy. You're going to have an amazing time. Okay, if you've got a Bible this morning, um, I want you to turn to 1 Samuel chapter 23. I'm going to read two or three scriptures to you, and then I'm going to get into my message. 1 Samuel 23. This is the story of David, and uh, I'm going to pick it up from verse 14. And David stayed in strongholds in the wilderness... And remained in the mountains in the wilderness of Ziph. Strongholds, by the way, is an Old Testament word for saying he lived in a cave. Just in case you're wondering. It's not a castle. <laughs> Even though castles are strongholds. To say he lived in the strongholds literally meant he lived in caves. Which is why one day when Saul was trying to get him, Saul went into a cave to relieve himself. To go to the toilet. And uh, that's in your Bible, by the way. Don't look at me funny. That's there. And David was hiding further in the cave with his men. And they said, ah, God's given you an opportunity to kill the guy now. And uh, you know the story. He cuts a little bit of his garment. And he gets convicted. And he says, no, God forbid that I should touch the Lord's anointed. So he lived in caves for a number of years. Imagine that. From the palace to the cave. 
And you think you've got problems. <laughs> okay, now this is David, okay? This is this season of his life. So he's there in the wilderness. Of Saul sought for him every day, but God did not deliver him into his hand. I'm going to read that to you again. Saul saw from every day, but God. Everyone say, but God. But God did not deliver him into his hands. I love that. And then if you'll turn over to the book of Acts for me. The book of Acts chapter 7. And this is Stephen. And he's recounting the history of Israel. And here's what he says. He says, And the patriarchs, becoming envious, sold Joseph into Egypt. But God was with him. And delivered him out of all of his troubles. And gave him favor and wisdom in the presence of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And he made him governor over Egypt and all his house. I want to just read that one more time. And patriarchs becoming envious, sold Joseph into Egypt. But God. Say, but God. God. I've got two words I want you to remember this morning. But God. Do you know, I believe everybody needs a but God moment. You see, here is Joseph, and his brothers are envious of him. They're jealous of him. They actually, in the story of Joseph, want to kill him, but one of the brothers, I think it's Reuben, says, no, we better not do that. And they sell him into slavery, and he goes down into Egypt. And so from the age of 17 until he finally becomes second to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, at the age of 30, so so for that whole period of time, 13 years, life is not great from a human perspective. Sold into slavery, he's working in Potiphar's house, and and the, how will you uh, experience that going through it? You know, the rejection, can you imagine it? Rejected from your family, rejected, you have to learn a new language, you have to learn to survive in a new country, in a new household. And here is Joseph experienced this. But the Bible has a take on everything that's happened. And the take is simply this. Even though they had an intention, God had a different intention. So that in Genesis chapter 50 and verse 20, these are the words of Joseph himself. You meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. You had an intention, but God had a bigger intention. Now, here's what I want to challenge you with this morning. How big is your problem, and how big is your God? How big is your problem, and how big is your God? You see, I think God sets us up with big problems to show us how big he is. You you know, too many times we have problems, but we have a big problem and a little God. You know what I'm saying? You can tell when someone's got a big problem and a little God because when you ask them how they're doing, they'll spend 20 minutes talking about their problem. And then they'll spend three seconds talking about God. Yeah, let me tell you about my problem. And then they'll go, but God's good. Okay, wow. Wow, now I know where the emphasis is in your life. David said in Psalm 34 magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and he delivered me out of all my fears. You see, when we magnify God, we don't make him bigger. But what we do is, through worship and magnifying the Lord, we get a bigger vision of who he really is. And that puts all your problems into perspective. You see, I think when we come to church, I think one of the things that we need to learn to do as a discipline is when you come through the door, park your problem. Just like you park your car. Park your problem. Just say, problem, uh, you've been bothering me all week. I'm just going to leave you here now because I'm going to go worship. So you are not going to hinder my worship. You're not going to hinder my engagement with God. You're not going to get in the way of me and God having a but God moment today. And you leave your problem there, and you go in. And you pretend like there's absolutely nothing wrong in your life. Because when you're in God's presence, there is nothing wrong. In his presence, the Bible says in Psalm 16, is fullness of joy. I don't care how sad you were out there, in here, you're going to be joyful. You make a decision. I'm in God's presence. 
in his presence is fullness of joy. I'm just going to enjoy God's presence today. I'm going to be joyful in the presence of the Lord. I'm going to sing like I don't have a care in the world. I'm going to engage with who God is. I'm going to let him be big in my life today. See, I find that people who have a big God, they'll tell you about their problem, but then they'll just spend a long time talking about the Lord. They say, yeah, I've got cancer. But God is with me every day, and he's strengthening me daily. And I find his promises are becoming more real to me. And the Holy Spirit is working in me. And from time to time, I feel something going on in my body, and I'm believing for healing. See, see they say their problem, but their problem is here. And they talk about the Lord, and he's here. And, and you see, this is the thing about Joseph. When he looked at his life, he knew that he had a but God moment. He, he knew that God was, but God was with Joseph. And God delivered him out of all of his troubles. And God exalted him. And I want to say to you, there's a healing coming. There's a deliverance coming. That there's an opportunity coming. That there's a change coming. It's, it's in the wind. I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. Come on, it's on its way. And God wants us to rejoice as though it was already here. We need a God encounter, friends. You know, revival is nothing more than a but God moment. It's where everyone is sad about the way things in, and then God shows up. But God. It's like, wow. You see, here was David in 1 Samuel 23. Every day, King Saul is looking for him. Can you imagine, can you imagine having a price on your head? Can you imagine living with a price on your head? That somebody is going to make money if they betray you and give you over to someone else. That's what David had to live with every day. He was a fugitive. He was on the run. He lost his salary. He lost his position. He lost his home. He lost his wife. She was given to another man. He lost his friends, except Jonathan. He lost everything. He lost his status. Everything was taken away that could be taken away. And do you know what I've discovered in life? That sometimes God will strip you to show you what you really have. Because what God has put in you, nobody can take away. Nobody can take away. I remember one time when I came out of leadership of a church, quite a successful church at that time, and I felt God was telling me he wanted to teach me some new things. So I resigned from leadership, came out. People said to me, oh, you've left the ministry. I said, no, I haven't. I'm just going through some retraining. I said, oh, but you're not pastoring anymore. I said, no, that's right. I'm doing something different. I'm learning again. And in my head, I wasn't out of the ministry. You see, a church can take away your salary, but a church can't take away your anointing because they didn't give it to you. <laughs> Only God can give you that. Only God can give you what cannot be taken away. And so, so we need to have an understanding of the bigness of God in our lives, friends. And sometimes the only way you can know his bigness is to be stripped of all the other stuff that gets in the way. God is not punishing you. God is not chastising you. God is blessing you with his bigness in his presence. We have a lady in our church. I love her. I'm sorry, I'm stripping off a little bit. Show you my muscles. Ladies, don't faint. It's all right. Not everyone can have a toned body like this. <laughs> I'm holding it in as hard as I can. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we, we can't all be like it. <laughs> Oh, dear Jesus. We've got this lady called Lucy in our church. Uh, she came to our church about four years ago. <coughs> a friend of hers brought her along. In fact, she told me she was going to bring her. She said, oh, I've got this friend called Lucy. She's dying of cancer. I just wish she would come along. And she was, she was kind of in a little fellowship, but it was a dying fellowship. It was nothing much was happening. They really didn't believe in healing there. And she was just very discouraged. So she brought her along to our church, and I met her, and I, I just said, tell me your story. And she said, well, I've, 
I've been a midwife for many years. I said, how many children have you brought into the world? She said, oh, over a thousand. A woman in her 60s. She said, I spent years training midwives. She said, and through them, probably thousands of come, children have come into the world. And every child that came into the world, she laid hands on it and blessed it and prayed for it. Isn't that wonderful? Blessing a new generation. And, and then later on in life, when it got near retirement, she decided to become a missionary. So she went on the ships and she went to Africa and she was doing missions in Africa all over the place. And then she got cancer. Uh, she wasn't feeling well one day. She went to the doctor and he said, you've got cancer. It's all over your body. He said, you need to go home and get ready to die. And uh, <clears throat> she went to the mission organization she was working for and she said, I've just been told I've got cancer. They canceled her medical insurance. She couldn't do missions any longer. She just went home and got depressed. And just was sad. And she was in this little church. So she's telling me the story. I said, Lucy, I said, we believe in healing in this church. We'd like to pray for you. Is that okay? And she looked at me and she said, oh, she's a little Irish lady. Oh, would you? Would you do that for me? Yes, we will. We'll do that for you. And as I began to pray for her, I began to pray that the Lord would just begin to restore her joy because the joy of the Lord is your strength. And I just, be, just began to pray, God, just restore her joy. Just let her be happy again. Let her be happy in your presence. And we prayed for her for a whole year. You know, and after, after a year, she has the biggest smile on her face. Just the biggest smile. And, and I said, is there any difference in the cancer, Lucy? She said, well, I, I go to the doctor regularly. She said, he said, for the first time, it's not getting worse. So it's kind of bottomed out. It's plateaued. I said, good. Well, how are you feeling? She said, I feel marvelous. I have my bad days, but I love Jesus. And just a restoration of joy, and it was just wonderful to see her. And she was just, just to see this, the bigness of God emerging again in her life. And so we prayed for her for another year, and I said, well, we're still going to go for this thing. And we, we, we just attacked it, you know, we kira shabundad and all that you know to do as a charismatic. You know that, don't you? Kira you know. In the spirit. You know, you're just, you're just attacking that thing every way you know how. But how many of you know that when you pray for the sick, you need to be careful not to pray yourself into unbelief? Have you done that one? I've done that one. It's where they're there, and you, you pray, and then after sort of 10 minutes, the, the energy goes out of the prayer. The life goes, but you keep praying anyway. <laughs> That's a mistake. Once the energy's gone, stop praying, then do it again another time. So, so I've learned that one in years of ministry. So we would pray for her regularly over the next year. And then she, went to, she was under an oncologist, and she went to the doctor again. She's, and the doctor said to her, well, he said, this is very strange, Lucy. He said, he said you're actually getting a little bit better. He, he said, there's, there's not so much cancer in your body. It's becoming more localized. He goes, it's, he goes, the medicine must be working. She was doing, I don't know, some stuff the doctor was giving her. But she was getting better, slowly. So we prayed for year, th year three, we're praying. We just keep praying, just from time to time. I said, come to the front, every time you feel inspired, we'll pray for you. And then we would get different teams of people praying for her. And uh, after year three, the doctor said, this is incredible, I've never seen anything like this. He said, this hasn't happened before. He said, he, he said your cancer is now just located in a few places. He says, you, you're, a very, you're a very special woman. She said, I know. <laughs> and so he sent her to another surgeon uh, to examine her. And this guy looked at her and he said, you know what, Lucy, if it keeps going like this, I actually think we can operate. Now, the cancer is in your liver. It's really badly in your liver, in fact. But the liver is the one organ in your body, or not the only one, but one of the few, where if you remove a part of it, it regenerates. Did you know that? There's probably a few doctors here who know that. But it regenerates. Isn't that marvelous? So she goes, so eventually time goes on, another six months goes by, and he says, he says, I think we can do an operation. Now, three and a half years ago, they said, you're beyond any surgery. We can't do anything. There's no point. It's everywhere. And so, so her cancer reduces to this point where they do this operation on the liver. So they take away a good part of the liver, almost half, I think, as much as they could without killing her. And then six weeks later, it had almost completely regenerated in six weeks. 
The, the, the doctor was completely astonished. He said, that's not normal. <laughs> and then they operated on the other side of the liver. And five weeks ago, she went to her oncologist and said, we need to do a lot of tests now. So they did MRI and CGI and CSI. <laughs> you know, every eye you can think of, they did. They did blood work, they did this, they did that, they did everything. He said to her, he said, Lucy, you don't have any cancer wow. in your body. She was totally healed. Now listen, listen, I have prayed for people with AIDS and seen them instantly healed. I have. I've seen people healed of cancer instantly. I've seen it. But I'll take four years. I'll take anything. Anything that gives me healing. Anything that gives me breakthrough. Because I believe she had a but God moment. You see, the doctors make a prognostication based upon diagnosis, based upon evidence, based upon what they see. And that's okay. That's the natural created order. That's the world we live in. But God! <laughs> but God made that world! And God can intervene, and God can break through, and God can bring healing, and God can make a difference. And we need a big but God moment! See, I think your problem for some of you is you have little butts. And personally, I like big butts and I cannot lie. <laughs> some of you are wondering, what's he talking about? <laughs> you see, a bug got moment changes everything, doesn't it? It changes everything. Paul wrote to the Corinthian church. He said, there's not many wise. There's not many noble. There's not many mighty. Not many, not many of those. But God has chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of this world to shame the things that are mighty. And God has chosen the despised things and the base things and the things that are nothing to bring to nothing the things that are that no flesh should glory in his presence. See, it's not about you. Paul said in the next chapter, 1 Corinthians 3, 6, he says, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. It isn't about you. Sorry to disappoint you. It's not about you and your magnificent personality and your great gifting. God will use all of that. But it isn't the wise. It isn't the mighty. It isn't the noble. You know who the wise are. How many PhDs have we got in the room? Hands up. PhDs. Goodness me, not one. Not many wise here. <laughs> How many generals from the army? They're the mighty. Like David's mighty men. Not... Oh. Goodness me, not one. How about those of noble birth? Any lords or ladies here today? Any kings or queens or princes? Oh my goodness, oh, one. There's a prince up there, there you go. wonder what tribe he comes from. One in, out of an entire church. You think, oh boy, how is God going to get by? He doesn't have anyone who's wise or mighty or noble or not many. But they're not the ones he's chosen. He chooses the weak things. He chooses the despised. He chooses the things that are nothing. Why? So that when he breaks through with his bigness and his greatness, everyone can say, that was God! See, flesh loves to glory. Flesh loves to take credit. Flesh, flesh loves to get its hand in and say, God is really fortunate to have me, isn't he? Now, now, now listen, God uses people. He does. He uses, he uses vessels. But that's what we are, friends. We're vessels. We're like that burning bush out in the desert that Moses saw. You see, it's the fire that makes the difference, not the bush. God will use any bush. 
And that's what God was trying to say to Moses. I've chosen you, but I could have chosen anyone. Don't think it's about you. It's about me in you. It's about the bigness of God in us. And I just think sometimes as, as believers, we just need to get over ourselves. Oh, I feel so weak. Really? God chooses the weak. You just, you just qualified yourself by saying that. <laughs> oh, I thought I'd get out of it by saying that. No, you just signed up with that little declaration of faith that you made. Oh, but I'm so weak. Yep, you'll do. I've got no brains. Perfect. I dropped out of university. Me too. Sign here. I can't even talk properly. Perfect. Wonderful. Yeah, I'll have you. I st -t 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 I'll make you a preacher. Hello? That's the God that we serve. He is a God who is big. And we've got to get a, a vision of the bigness of God. You know, we have interns in our church. We've got three interns right now. It's our third year of doing intern program. And we really... It's intense in our church. So our interns work for us six days a week. Because I said that's what Genesis tells us. Six days shall you labor, seven shall you rest. I think everybody should do six days a week actually. So if you've got a five day a week job, you should give me, be giving at least one day a week to the church. And then have a Sabbath. Oh, that went down well, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, when's he coming back? <laughs> Don't worry, another four years. <laughs> So our interns, it's quite intense. Uh, and uh, we give them accommodation and we give them food and nothing else. So I said, you'll always have somewhere to sleep and you'll always have food in your stomach. You have to trust God for everything. You have to trust God for your toothpaste. You have to trust God for your petrol. You have to trust God. And they say to me, why are you doing that? I said, so that you will experience a year of seeing the bigness of God in your life. So we had one young man, he wanted to go to Bethel, to train at Bethel. His name is Nick, and I really encouraged him to do that. We'd already sent one girl there. And uh, she had a great time. And so uh, Nick had written this letter. Uh, and now, now, you know all missionary letters are really, it's da di da di da di da di da please give me money. You know that, don't you? If you've ever been involved in missions, that's what it's all about. You know, Make it nice and sweet, and then give, make sure you write your bank account at the bottom. So he wrote this lovely letter, and then at the end, you know, it was, and by the way, if you'd like to support me, <laughs> which is the real intention of the letter, but nobody ever says that. Because that's not, that's not Christian. It's not a good way to do it. We're not here for the money. Well, if you haven't got any, you are. Because you need to live. So I said to him, Nick, I said, you could write that letter. You could send that letter to all your friends. You could do. And there's nothing wrong with it. I know loads of Christians who do that. Missionaries, they do that. It's, it's fine. It's accepted. We do that. I said, well, wouldn't it be great if you didn't and you got the money anyway? And he looked at me and he said, well, do you think that could happen? And I said, well, the God that I've been serving for 35 years is big enough to do that. Why don't you try it? He said, but I might not get the money. I said, yep. You might not. I'll stand with you. I'll believe with you. Let's do it together. And to his credit, having written the letter, he just parked it. He didn't send it. He had his emails there. He didn't send a letter. Do you know that boy waited two months and then a student from university, a student, not a wealthy businessman, we had a few of those in the church, a student from university said, Nick, the Lord woke me up in the middle of the night and told me I had to give you a check. Here it is. And it is his entire fee for the year. His entire fee. But God. <laughs> but God. You see, friends, I want to invite you this morning to to have a but God moment. I, I, I want to invite you that whatever sentence you're declaring that is about your pain or your suffering or your disappointment or your challenge in life right now, I, I want you, yes, say the sentence, 
But, but don't go on about it for 20 minutes. Just say what it is. Because that's what Jesus, what do you want me to do? Well, uh, I'm blind and I'd like to see. He didn't say, well, I've been blind for 35 years and I live down the road and you should see my mother and it's just been really difficult. I've been out begging every day and this is my bowl. It's not really big enough. I don't really get enough money every day and then I have to walk home and I can't see where I'm going. <laughs> Excuse me, just tell me what the problem is. Yes, say the problem. But then purpose in your heart that you're going to say, but God, I'm believing in faith. But, but God, I want you to touch my heart. But God, I want you to touch my body. But God, I want you to put a song in my heart so that every day, no matter what I'm facing, I'm going to praise you. I'm going to declare your goodness. I'm going to declare your greatness. Like David, I will praise the Lord amongst the nations. Come on, friends. In, in Psalm 16, David said that's what he's going to do because in God's presence, there's fullness of joy. At his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. <laughs> the Lord is our shepherd. Psalm 23. We don't have to lack anything. He leads us. He guides us. He restores our soul. How big is your God today? Oh, but God. Wouldn't it be great if we uh, could interrupt one another? Can we, can, we, can, we, can we sort of have a new protocol in church? Somebody's telling you their story and just interrupt and go, but, but God. You know, when they go a little bit longer, you say, but God. And they go, oh, gotcha. Yeah. Go. You see, when I talk to people over the years I've been a pastor, you know, I try and help them with biblical truth and they'll say to me, but pastor, or but you don't know, or but you don't understand. And they have a but, but it's a little but. It's a but about the problem. It's a but about how I can't possibly relate. Because you haven't been through what I've been through. Oh, I know. I feel your pain. But God. But God knows. Here's a good one for you. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. There is no temptation that has overtaken a man, but such is as common to man. But God is faithful, who, with, who will not allow you to be tempted above that which you're able, and with the temptation will make a way of escape, that you may be able to bear it. Do you realize that even in temptation, God is actually rigging it to your capacity, to your maturity, to your understanding of truth. And God is actually there and he's created exit signs. You know, you can't build a building today without exit signs. It's against the law. Because if there's a danger there, everyone needs to know where to run. And God's got massive exit signs every time temptation is set up by the devil. God says, devil, you can't do that until the exit sign is alight. So that every single person has the opportunity for deliverance, even in temptation, because of God's faithfulness. But God is faithful. Yeah. Come on, friends. I'm preaching much better than you're responding. <laughs> you're not clapping me. You're clapping truth. You're clapping the bigness of God this morning. You're saying amen to who he is. Oh, two minutes. That went fast. Friends, I want to invite you this morning to do a little transaction with me. I want to invite you to take whatever issue it is. Maybe you've got a son or a daughter who's not walk, walking with Jesus right now. Maybe they're doing this or they're doing that and you're living with disappointment. I've been there. I know what that's like. I'm a father of six. I know what it's like when your kids are not quite where you want them to be. And your heart breaks for them because you see the potential. You see the gifting. And you see more than they see, and you just want to slap them sometimes, don't you? Say, wake up. They need a but God moment. And you need to love them unconditionally until they get it. And you need to be in a place of faith, believing that they will have a but God moment. And not in despair. Don't give up on them. Believe God for them. Believe God, that God will come through. Whatever your issue is this morning... I want to just pray for you, and I just want to believe that every single one of you, over the next few weeks and months, you're going to have a but God moment. You're going to be like Lucy. You're going to know the bigness of God in your life. And for her, it was a process. For her, it didn't happen in one go. 
For her, it it happened over a period of four years. But I want to tell you, today that woman is transformed. Do you know what? She She just contacted me the other day. She said, Peter, I can get medical insurance once I've been clear for six months. She said, I'm going to go on my first missionary trip. We have a mission out in Ethiopia. She's going to Ethiopia. This is a woman in her 60s. She knows what she's living for. She knows that the breath in her lungs today is a gift from a father in heaven who loves her. And cancer didn't get her. And cancer doesn't need to get you. Come on, friends. Can we do that? If you, if you want that for yourself, I, I want to, can I just invite you to come down the front? Can I invite you just to come down? I'll just pray for you. We won't make this a long ministry time. But, but if you could just come out right now. And just say, oh God, I want a but God moment. Maybe it's for you personally. Maybe it's for your family. Maybe it's for a friend. Maybe it's for somebody who's a neighbor. But you want to stand there this morning to believe that they will have a but God moment. Could we stand to our feet right now? Just let me invite you to come down the front. Just come and stand here quickly. I won't make this long because I know the kids' ministry is going. I know some of you need to go there. But I don't want you to leave this morning without praying for you. And if the ministry team can get behind these folks, just pull as far forward as you can, friends, because there's quite a few here. Just hold out your hands like you're going to believe God for something. Some of you are believing for healing this morning. Some of you are believing for family and friends. Some of you are believing for an intervention. Some for finances. All you know is, is that problem's been around long enough. You need a but God moment that's going to change it. And the way you get a but God moment is to begin to reinterpret what's, in ha- what's been happening to you as God's goodness in allowing you to see his bigness. This is not a punishment over your life. This is God allowing you to see how big he is. And Father, right now, for every single person here this morning, I'm praying for a divine intervention. Spirit of God, from one end of this room to the other. Now, I'm just going to come down. I'm just going to touch you very quickly. Okay? Just, it's just going to be a touch. Because I'm just believing in that moment, in that touch. I'm just believing right now in Jesus' name. Just for an impartation. Spirit of God, let it come. Let it come. Let it come. Cool. Let it come. Deep with it. Deep with it. But God. But God. Deep with it. Let it come. But God. God's bigness. God's goodness. God's faithfulness. Deep deep, deep within. Let it come. Let it come. All disappointment I rebuke right now. I rebuke right now. And I command hope to rise, to rise, to rise in Jesus' mighty name. Let it come. Let it come. Let it come. Deep, deep, deep within. Just take a step back. Thanks. Thank you, God. Cool. Sufficiency, sufficiency, sufficiency. Sufficiency. No more poverty. Sufficiency. By God. By God. Let it break through. Break through, God. God of the breakthrough. I break the power of condemnation and accusation. I break it break it, break it in Jesus name and I restore, restore, restore joy, restore expectation thank you God, let it come sufficiency, let it come spirit of God, let it come let it come let it come a back God moment, spirit of God let it come let it come let it come, thank you for a man of truth
Lad det komme. yes this morning that their hearts have responded to your bigness that they've said yes to not allowing the chapter to be concluded without two words being added and I want to pray Father for every chapter that's being written every story here this morning that's being represented and I want to pray Spirit of God for those but God interventions to come to every single life I want to pray for stories and testimonies in this house of your bigness God yeah of your goodness, yeah. of your faithfulness. Wow. And I pray, Spirit of God, that you would come this morning and just wash over. Just let come with a wave of your love. Come with a wave of your presence. Come with a wave of your goodness, God. Hallelujah. 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 Wow. Thank you, Jesus. You know, there's a number of people in the church that have had significant medical problems that, um, you know, I just, I just said to someone a moment ago, you're going to be my Lucy. And uh, I, I, you know, just want to encourage us that, you know, many times what happens is we go, oh, look, here I am again. I've, I've got this problem and, you know, and I, and I feel bad about coming. We shouldn't feel bad about coming into the presence of God. Magnify the Lord with me. Let's magnify Him rather than what our issue is, what our condition is, whatever that is. And so, you know, I, I'm just saying we're going to create moments. If it has to last for you know, a year or two years or four years for Lucy, or whether it's instantaneous, we're going to create moments. Now, we always pray for people, but I just got so convicted this morning. We need to pray and, and, and just begin to create moments where we just get a bunch of people around and going to believe for the breakthrough that we've always believed for, but often we've never seen. And, and we've seen healings, yes, we've seen release, we've seen all of those kind of things. But I want to change gears. But God... <laughs> but God, but let's do that. You know, um, Pastor Peter, thank you so much for coming. He's half an Englishman and half an Italian. So that explains a few things. But we need to get a little Italian in us as well. And, uh, and, and tonight, I want you to listen. You know, we need to pack this place out tonight. There's other people coming as well, but well, you need to get here early. There's going to be a choir sitting up there. We're going to review, reserve this part up there for them. And we're going to have a great night, I can tell you. Peter's coming uh, just at the right time. I believe you've got a word in season um, just, just for the whole combined thing. And I think that's going to be fabulous. So we're going to have a great time. Amen. Let's put our hands together and bless the servant of the Lord this morning. Let's just do that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And everybody say together those two words. One, two, three. But God. Amen. Have a great afternoon, folks. Take someone out for lunch. Be kind to them. <laughs>